Hey everybody. So yeah, I think uh, this is on the other side. So, so let's go ahead and kick it off. All right. So well, I'm Morgan Egan, uh, creative director at Holding Web, and uh, I'm here to talk about design systems and let's try to you know wrap our heads around what it is and some of the opportunities with it. Uh, but first, I want to go down memory lane for a little while. All right, that's me. Recognize me? That's uh, 10 years ago, around about 10 years ago, 2014. Almost, so that's time. Yeah? <laughs> Same shirt. Can you believe that? Same shirt, but for some reason I thought I'd roll up the sleeves and it would look good. I don't know why I did that. Anyways, but th so that was me 10 years ago at Wyden Kennedy. Uh, back in London, so that's an agency, a uh, super popular agency in London. And so for a bit of context, uh, I worked in uh, lots of agencies in London, uh, doing brand work, uh, advertising. Uh, I lived in Shanghai as well, uh, worked uh, for one year. And um, also then I came uh, to Montreal and I worked remotely for Facebook for two years, um, where I was involved in some of the design systems. And I worked at a startup in Montreal that was uh, called Elm AI, um, uh, for which uh, uh, I worked on the brand. And we were developing an ecosystem of uh, apps, and for which we uh, did an, uh, a design system as well. Uh, and so that brings me back uh, here and uh, doing creative direction at Evolving Brand. But let's go right back to 2014. On that summer, 2014, that was 27th of June, 2014, you see what was happening in London, there was this big festival, Glastonbury Festival. I don't know if you guys know about it, it's super popular. It was supposed to be a lot of fun. It's a little bit like uh, Woodstock, right? Into Woodstock. And um, so look at that lineup. That was like, so Arcade Fire, they were popular. Lana Del Rey, I don't know if you remember her. She was oh. popular. Right? She's Canadian. There you go. <laughs> and this is how it felt to be at Glastonbury. Look at that. But, you know what? I was doing on the 27th of June 2014. I wasn't at Glastonbury. No, I was back at the office because Google had just released material design around about 10 years ago. The first design system. Looks a lot less, a uh, lot less sexy than Glastonbury. <laughs> but I was reading up those pages. That was amazing. I remember to this day how I felt. It was just mesmerizing. You know, they had documented all these things, put them out there for us to read. And I remember, for example, like quick example, they had documented how in nature, following the, the laws of physics, you had no straight lines, you only had curves. Go figure. And so basically, if you wanted to have a natural interaction on a UI, well, basically you had to add some kind of curve and that would give it a natural motion. It's like, wow, that's amazing. Couldn't believe it. They had even looked at drop shadows. You know, drop shadows were a big thing, still, still kind of is. Anyway, so, and they had looked at them in 3D dimension, put them in, in perspective, and measured the distance between the component and the background. Like, mind blowing, who would have thought of doing something like that? Everybody was doing, you know, drop shadows, but you only looked at them from, from the top view, right? Not in perspective. Anyway, they measured it and you know, all that. And on top of that, which was like insane, what they did is they open sourced it. It was out to the public for everyone to read. Back in the day, right, this kind of information, designers would have killed to get that kind of information, given an arm and a leg, right? Just to go through. It felt like corporate spying just to read this, this thing. And so, Andrea Ferran, when I read that quote uh, a while back, Andrea Ferran, I don't know if you guys know, head chef at El Bulli, one of the best restaurants in the world. He's like super creative and he's got kind of an artist approach to things. But anyways, uh, 
he wrote and said, it's not important to be the first one to do something, it's important to be the first one to conceptualize it. And so for some reason, you know, material design, they published that. They, it seemed like they were the first one to conceptualize all these things that, you know, everyone was thinking about, talking about, they just put it out there. So we're thinking, well, okay, that's good, you know, curves and drop shadow height and measurements and, well, how does that really apply to me? Why, why, why would I do that? I'm not Google, I don't, I don't need to do talk about all these things. All right, so let's take uh, an example, right? Got a new product out, you need to communicate about it, and you're going to build a website. So design it, build it, publish it. The brand expression is perfect. It's amazing. You get great feedback. Congratulations. Well done. That's amazing. All right. Things get a little bit more complicated. Two months later, well, you got another product that comes out and it's new functionalities. Everything's a little bit different. So you decide to do a different approach. Uh, it's a different team that does it slightly differently. Um, it's good, it's all good, but it, it works, it works well, but the, the, the brand experience is a little bit painted. And then six months later, it looks complete control over it. You actually have a campaign out and you reach out to the, it's more of a, an ad agency, they do a campaign and they specialize in Coella Bears. But don't get me wrong, these are really cute, right? But <laughs> now this is completely disjointed. And, this is the face of your customers when they're going through that experience, this disjointed experience. I'm just kidding because actually, you know what, customers don't really care. They don't really care about your brand. They don't. But it doesn't help to build that trust, trusted relationship, right? So it, it, it won't really make a difference in the end, but you are not building that relationship. But actually, the executives that are paying for those websites that's probably more accurate. That's probably their piece of their piece of work because they spent all that money and you know not developing that trust. So as they say, on Shark Tank, I'm out. That's not what they say. They say there must be another way. Okay, so design systems. Well, what are they? So let's let's try to think of it as Cookbook for your brand. There was actually a, a big debate before before this, as whether it should be uh, a, a, a map for a treasure treasure island. It was that, or there was the classic uh, Lego bricks analogy. What I was thinking, All right, let's do something a little bit special. Cookbook for your brand, but only if it was a cookbook for your brand. Well, you'd have a little fridge that would go with it. You'd have all the ingredients uh, to cook that brand. All right, so let's look at a definition. Set of reusable components and clear guidelines for the design and development of an unlimited number of applications or websites. And who doesn't like good crap? So this is it. Bare minimum. Design system equals usable components plus guidelines. And let's open that up. Let's click down on this and let's see what it's made of. So the great thing about this, and you see, is that and what I've written here is that it's all those teams that are involved. So you get all those teams to contribute to, it, right? You don't need to have all these people, and you don't need to have all that content right away. You start small, and you expand over time. You expand over uh, over time with your how your company expands as well. Uh, but here are the, the the main elements, right? You've got marketing, you've got brand design, UX, UI, content development. And all these people are gonna input some, some content in there. All right, so let's have a look at all these different uh, elements. So brand strategic framework. So that is owned by the marketing team. And uh, it's going to be all the foundational elements that's really going to influence all the rest, all the other things that we see. They're going to influence all that. So it's really important uh, because it has huge impact on all the rest. So you're going to have all your 
messaging frameworks, you're going to have your, uh, uh, um, your positioning frameworks, you're going to have your values, brand values, mission statements, all of these things. And um, so your copywriters, they're going to access all that and they're going to be able to uh, write content really quickly when they can, they can access all this. All right, so I've got examples here. It's a little bit pixelated. Try to squint your eyes and see this because there, there's a lot of good examples in there. So first off, you see here on Atlassian um, uh, design system, you got your mission, personality, uh, brand promise, values. So this is great. And access that, your copywriter, you can write it. But here it goes one step further. You've got these are the meta uh, uh, design system, and the strategic frameworks are actually templates. So so you see, you've got the messaging framework, you've got the brand on the page, and what this does is basically, if you want to create a new brand, you can actually use these to make sure that they fit in the, in, in the branded ecosystem, right? So it's not just the strategi the strategist giving those uh, values and saying, here, here it is. No, 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 no. You've got those templates as well. A huge value. Visual identity owned by brand design. So you're going to have right colors, topography, icons, photos, all these. Very easy to change. So now here, a few examples. Typography in the WhatsApp uh, design system. What's interesting here is that instead of being just our typography is Helvetica. No. Here you see, here's the headline. Subtitle, body copy, call to action. You see them all together. It starts to make a lot of sense. They're clear very actionable, right? You've got the photography uh, guidelines for IBMs, all those photos. These can act as a library, you can download them, that's great. But also, they tell you how to uh, create that, that look, the lighting, uh, the, 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 the characters that you want to feature, all that. The icons for Shopify, very easy. Look at this, you got, you got a search bar. So if it's easy to find, it's easy to use, right? Okay, design guidelines. Trust me, you're going to need this. Basically, if you give those brand elements to 100 designers, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get 100 different interpretations, right? So this is really going to help clarify anything, get rid of any ambiguity, and you can get into the details. That's it. You know, they say God's in the detail. Something else I say is you can read between, you got to read between the lines, right? And here on this design system, they even give you the, the spacing between each lines. And this is actually very important. Talking from experience here. Uh, Pinterest uh, design system here, they give you examples of color usage. And we can't read here, but they say the, the, the actions that the colors are associated with. So there's no real bad thing to do, but what's important is that everybody knows this and use that color consistently throughout the experience. Also, you got your do's and don'ts. Very, very important. And you can really document all the best practices. All right, copywriting time. This is going to give you the, all the syntax for writing. And it's not just for um, marketing content, right? It's UX content. You got your navigation, cost of action, messages, error messages, your website is talking to you all the time. And you want to make sure that it's doing it uh, consistently, right? Some great examples here. You've got Microsoft. And here they give you an example of how to use pronouns. And basically, it's the classic example of your, it's my account, is it my account, or is it your account? You know? And my desktop, your desktop. And both things are right. There's nothing wrong, right? But you want to make sure that you do that consistently, that the website is talking to you from the same perspective. Actually, on this one, look at this example. Look at this. It's not clear, it's pixelated. I know. But what they say, because I know what they say, action verbs at the beginning of every paragraph. That's very powerful. You don't, you don't know this until it's documented, but actually, on that page, all those paragraphs start with an action verb. Okay, design kits. What the design kits are is they are actually design files. So we think about these days, who knows what it's going to be next year. I would bet it's going to be Figma. So, anyways, um, 
But uh, so that's that's those parts, design parts. And you can get very different scales of design components in those files. Basically, you can start from, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry to pixelate, but, but you see here those sliders from Google, very small, very small detail. It's a slider, all right? And on, on the right, you see here on Facebook, look at this, you got, so we call that a sticker sheet. You got all the components for one page. And when you get all these together, and they're all editable in life, what you can do is you can create new experiences really, really quickly. Grab it, got an idea, done. Very easy to use. And then you got the code snippets. And what this does is not only you have code, you have the live component right next to it. And that makes a huge difference because it takes out all the guessing. You got the component right there. So in this case, it would be the button and the code right next to it. Here you have the forms of the idea the buttons, the MailChimp, and you can experiment, you see the code, you see the live uh, component. All right, so what would be some of the benefits, right? First and foremost, reusability, right? So let's duplicate work. Yes, this is going to help you to avoid you know, working on something for like months on, on end just to realize that somebody's done it already ages ago, reduce risk. Yes, you start from a good foundation. You start from something that's been tried and tried and tested. It's uh, proven its efficiency. Self-service. This is incredible. Basically, you don't need to brief anybody anymore. Everybody can just access it. They can read through it on their own. You don't need to brief anyone. Everybody is more autonomous. And no more reinventing the wheel, right? Once it's done, it's done. It's it's you know it's a hard thing, but if you've done it, now you can move on to something else. Then you can be on something more difficult, more creative. You made it. All right, consistency. Well, I like to think of it more as complementary, right? Because you don't want everything to be always just like the same, but you want things to work together and complementary. So that's how I see it a little bit more. External brand is uh, external work is on brand, right? So easy to send that to your agencies or your partners. Here are all the guys, everything's documented. Really easy to get that external work on brand. Team started to think at scale. Yes, because when they start to use that, what happens is when they, they're building new components, well, or designing new components, they're going to start thinking, hey, well, what if it was to be reused? How might I uh, do that better? How might I design it so that it would be? Uh, able to reuse uh, elsewhere and stop thinking uh, too much in, in terms of custom custom components. So consistent across the platforms. Yes, you're going to get you know your social media, your website, your apps. You're going to be able to get those looking a lot more consistent. And then one of for me one of the most important. Uh, elements in uh, added value of design system, right? It's that it's going to be miscommunication because that is the main thing. You get all these things that we looked at at the beginning, right? You get all of them to talk because you're doing that project together, right? So, break down the silos. Of course, you're doing that project, as I said, so for sure you're going to get those things talking. Visibility for everyone. There, this is literally in front of them. The work is literally published there, so they get visibility on what uh, everybody else is doing. Build a common language, right? Uh, syntax, naming convention, all these things start to align. Because you realize, well, it's the same, right? And once all these things come together, well, they have a common vision that starts to emerge. That's a beautiful thing. And this is why I think that this definition is actually something that, you know, it could, it could work. It's not the same we had before, but it's a communication platform that enables collaboration between designers and developers to help them, to help teams work more efficiently together. And I do think that that's an essential component communication. All right, so where do I start? Yes, you cannot do everything. You need to prioritize. How do you do that? Well, let's take those, you remember those three websites we looked at earlier? And let's say that these are all the components that are 
views on the website, on the city website as well. What you're going to do is component audit. What that feels like a little bit is like throwing all your clothes on your bed and sorting them through them slowly. Okay, morning is going to be super messy at first, but eventually you're going to end up with something that's a you know, neat and organized spreadsheet. And what this does is it helps you identify the common components, the ones that are recurring, the ones that are coming back over and over, and the ones that are really painful, and the ones that you've done over and over again, and you, and that, that have been painful enough, well, that's when you say, all right, enough is enough, let's do it, let's put it in the design system. That's when you can invest in those. For example, you have, well, you have those. 3D calls to action, that we saw the name that would be break and study. So, be easy, right, to add that button to the design system, right? Just a single button. Wrong! You know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Very hard. Why? Well, it's not just one button, right? You've got all the states. Default, hover, press, disable, focus, and then you got the secondary button, right? You don't forget those. And you got the tertiary, ghost, and link. Yes? So, you see where I'm going, right? It's part of a bigger ecosystem, a complicated system, right? And I'm not even mentioning when you've got your icons and the dark mode, right? Okay. How do you put this all together? Because since the beginning, it seems like it's a little bit of a sort of a, you know, ethereal thing. You got all these things that are all, all nice, but no. Dreams do come true. All these things do align on one platform. And it's true that it's going to be, it's always going to be uh, a little bit of compromise, right? So uh, they all have a different perspective. And so let me try to walk you through uh, these. And, and see what are the what are the benefits. And basically, you got one that's more focused. It depends on on, on which team you, you want to focus on. So let's see how these look like. All right. So I swear there's no uh, there's no sponsor money here. Just want to share with you some some platforms that did exist. All right. So you got Brandpad, and that one focuses on brand uh, and you know and style guys and, and, and branding guys. And basically, it doesn't have, this one is great, but it doesn't have uh, all the code snippets. You cannot do that with this. So you're missing out on this, but you, you do get all the branding and design stuff. Storybook, on the other hand, has all the live code the, and the live components and the code snippets. So this is great, but you do not get your brand guidelines. You do not get that one. Actually, you could do that, but you would need to be a, a front-end developer to be able to do, to do that, because actually, you got to know how to write. I think it's it's in Markdown. I think it's in Markdown, right? So that you need to know that code in order to be able to uh, put these together. And it, it, it's, it's easy for front-end developers, but for everybody else that, so think of those marketers, designers, all these that don't want to do that thing. We literally can't do it, it's too complicated. And that's it. Here it is, Frontify. Bridges everything. You got your brand guidelines, you got your live components, and your code standards. But this one, so this platform is actually, uh, you need a subscription, so it's not open source. The storybook is. And so, you know, that's it. You, gotta, you will have to pay for this. And, well, you know, to be honest, a lot of companies, what they do is they actually build it from scratch. They build it from scratch. So that gives them a lot more flexibility. You can put in your brand guidelines, you can put in the live code and live components. And what this does is that basically, well, your design system becomes just a, another a design build uh, project. It's just a, another website built and design project. Okay, so let's see if you actually really need one. And we've got these sliders here that will help you determine if that's really something that you that, that would be beneficial for you, right? Let's say you can look at the business model, you know, are you do you have lots of different clients? Are you an agency? Or uh, do you have your own product that is not going to change the time, right? And you've got your own ecosystem. Do you have 
uh, resources available, but you do not, because you will need to put uh, people to work on it, right? It's not, it, it, it's not going to happen by magic. Um, is your friend stable? So is it worth documenting it now? Or is it still flux? Or, you know, is it volatile and you need to stay on, on trend and keep uh, changing? Very important. How many websites do you have, right? Do you have like, less than five? Or do you have hundreds? Some people have like 500 websites to manage. 500, even more. And then decision maker support, very important. Do you have the backing of the decision makers in your company? Because if you don't, well, your chances are you're, you're going to change your focus really quickly. We're talking about that, so let's look at some governance models. First, there's distributed. Uh, some people call it uh, federated as well, and you've got centralized. Two very different cases, and I've had experience with both. And I think that uh, it depends on. It really depends on you know the company culture, company size, and, and that's really what's going to help you decide. So distributed decisions are made by uh, the local teams. It's better if you have a smaller company for this because uh, because you know if you have too many local teams then it becomes a little bit chaotic all the uh, inconsistencies are going to be ironed out through communication so you're going to do a lot of synchronization with all your teams and uh, as an example when uh, i worked at that uh, startup element ai we were building that brand and that uh, ecosystem of apps well we actually had one designer for each app that was designed, that were, that were built. And uh, so th there were uh, maybe a, a more than five, but it was a small team, very opinionated designers, very smart, very dynamic. And we had a lot of engagement and that was a, a distributed uh, approach with one designer and these could be you know, our local designers. And, uh, and they were very engaged with it because everybody was contributed, contributing to it. So we had those uh, design reviews, everybody was looking, here's, here's the recurring ones, here, here it is, and everybody was using it and everybody was contributing to it. And then you got centralized. That was more the approach at, uh, when I worked at, back at Facebook. And they actually had lots of centralized teams, design system teams, because there were lots of uh, different design systems actually uh, but anyways and so basically the design decisions are taken by one centralized team dedicated team you're probably going to need one team that does just that and um, and and basically depending on uh, the culture as i said it, it would make sense these are like huge teams and um, the, the you know the people were you know very that interested in applying it, the design system was very good, and that there was no friction, so uh, people would happily apply that, that, you know, that design system and follow those, those rules. Now, there's a scoop by Laurie Kaplan from Atlassian uh, that says it wasn't hard to get designers to follow the guidelines, it was hard to get them to agree on the guidelines. All right, so. Wrapping it up, the design system really has a ripple effect that benefits all the steps of creating a website. Employees are onboarding much quicker. They have access to all the foundational elements and they, they get they there really quickly. The teams are communicating more efficiently, right? They're all on the same platform. The company starts to make economies of scale, doesn't repeat all the same work over and over. Uh, and so that, that is really, really a lot more efficient. The brand is better represented in all the experiences, and your customers are developing potentially a more trustworthy relationship with the brand. But for me, the most important thing is not necessarily all those goals that you achieve, right? For me, what's more important is the company that you become in the process of developing all those things. Thank you. All right, guys. I don't know in terms of time. Yeah.
All right, questions, guys? Yes, sir. I was wondering if you had any thoughts on uh, the UI pattern uh, margin for Drupal. So uh, the UI pattern module for Drupal. Um, so are you talking about? Could you could you clarify what what that would? Yeah. So UI pattern is basically uh, allows you to create. Uh, those uh, visual objects, uh, buttons, uh, DPAs, what have you, uh, and then um, attach the DFS, attach the, the JavaScript behavior, and create those library and what have you library. So you define them maybe as uh, atoms and just molecules and the organism, and then uh, you know, you can you can call them with uh, with templates. You can you can call them within your your website. So that was something actually we were looking. Actually, Marisa had a uh, from from she had a class you know, that on on the mountain. So I found it pretty good. Uh, but um, maybe uh, you know. It looks good in, in, in theory, but in, you know, if you have too many objects, it is hard to work, and I would rather make it look on the different mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, so I think I uh, will wrap my hand uh, on this. And basically, okay, so Storybook would be uh, the place where you would you would have all those, all, those, all that pattern library. But, you know, Teresa, maybe you could ask her about this by content, you know, right? But, um, so, from my perspective, you don't get an, a, a sort of an API that would call that design system from Drupal, that would call the design system and apply that to your website. You would not have that communication. But that's from my perspective, so please do go ask Teresa about this, because maybe she's got another like, super innovative way of doing it and forking it, or I don't know how she does it. But uh, the design system is a documentation tool. It's a, a separate website. You've got all that information, but I, I do not believe that you actually like cross uh, the code with the actual website. I might be wrong. But thank you. That's a good question. All right, all right. Well, right here. Dimitri. What do you think is the biggest reason why efforts to create a design system fail? And how do you, how, like, how would you fix that? Mm -hmm. All right, good question. Well, and you, did you guys hear uh, this question? Why do design systems fail? Anybody has an answer for this? I got my own. <laughs> Anyone has a? All right, well, for me, I would say, oh, got got one, one answer here. Yeah. Maybe they are, they're always building custom components, a lot of custom things and stuff that kind of follow the system of natural design. A lot of this tend to like build their own columns, their own things, and not get updated to the system. Because that system is like already being tested for accessibility, you can see you know, all those things, I guess, could be one of the reason why if they build more customized things, they won't be able to keep up with the new design system. For example, material design 2 has come out, now material design 3 has come out. So how do we go to those material design 3? And now we have to, we have so many custom components, but now we have to adopt the material design 3. I think that was one of the challenges I've seen. Mm -hmm. Two custom. Two custom. Question. Are you referring to how the creation of design system fell or the implementation of design system? Just the whole effort, like let's say we, uh, the, the whole effort, let's say like, we want to implement a design system on a company level or like at a organizational level. And for some reason, like the reason that design system is not being used, like, uh, like you mentioned, like people start developing their own components, but I think that's not the reason. That's the that's the outcome of of uh, the failing design system failing effort. So uh, I have my own answer as well. I just you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious about your uh, your thoughts on this. All right. Well, you know, I, I I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I 
from my perspective, I would say that maybe you know governance would be you know those systems of governance that would ensure that you have real engagement. You know, so I think that that would be really important that you choose the right governance so that the designers, all the people that actually use it, feel really engaged. Right. So either you know federated uh, approach, distributed, uh, and and that worked really well for for us in that specific case because. Every designer was contributing to it. There was a good group dynamic, and everybody was pushing for it and keen to, to, to do it and to use it, right? So there was a lot of excitement around it. And I think that that's great. And at Facebook, on the other hand, well, you know, big machine, very robust design systems, and there was a lot of emphasis on enforcement. So you had a lot of design reviews. You could not publish something just like that. You had you always had to do that design review, send it to the design uh, the, the design system team, and they had to review it, everything, right? But it worked really well. It worked really well. Everybody was still super excited about it as well. So yeah, and I think I think that, that you know that was good. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. Well, Get back to you after. You, you, you just stopped, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to mention uh, uh, the talk we had earlier on Drupal 10 in the other room. Uh, one of the uh, new things on Drupal 10 is uh, so called single uh, directory components. Uh, so, what that means is that all the CSS and markup and JavaScript for a given component are in the same place and ideally namespace with good class names and so on. Um, one difficulty I've had with uh, uh, having like the use of design across several sites is that a lot of maybe more junior front-end developers are going to have a 3,000 line CSS file and maybe not uh, scope their uh, rules very well. Uh, and so it's very hard to extract one, let's say, button or a call to action from there. And, and extract what CSS is involved uh, and what markup and what uh, JavaScript. So the idea of the single directory component for me is very powerful in conjunction with, uh, with the uh, design components we're talking about because we can really take those components and the code snippets can be this uh, single directory component. We can stay out of one site and put it in another if we are uh, using Drupal. So I, I think that the, those, those two things go very well together. Mm -hmm. Um, so, well, is that what Dimitri was talking about? Oh no, Sebastian, sorry. That was Sebastian what was talking about. Was that a little bit uh, late, right? That single directory, right? Yeah, I don't think it was the same thing. It was not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it's an evolution of probably why the drive times was more to go I'm not sure if it's the same thing, but we'll take a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. Anybody else? So in your experience, um, so building a design system is one thing, but how much time or effort do you think these people need to maintain it for the typically? Um, okay, so that's a, that's a really good question. I, I would not have right now, like, here's your timeline, here's your, here's how much I need to invest on this. I, I could not answer. I, I do think that, you know, again, it's going to be, you know, maintaining is going to, it's probably going to be an agile, uh, you know, uh, workflow that you're going to need to have. And so depending on the importance of it, you're probably going to need to fluctuate the amount of time and resources that you put on it. Um, yeah, it can be, uh, you know, if you have a dedicated team that was working on it, right, so that's full-time team and depends on the amount of people that are working on it. Um, but, uh, you know, again, so that would be, again, that all the content that goes in is such, you know, all of these things, all these pages and sections of the design system, take all of them take a lot of time, right? So, and then ma maintaining them, you know, it would, again, like, it's very, it's very hard to determine just like that. Like here, here is the answer for this. Yeah. But maintenance is important. 
maintenance is, is very important, of course, and you got to have a, a specific workflow for it, right? In communication about you know, each version that you do, uh, and including everyone so that everyone has visibility on uh, the, the version and the branches that if you do it, if you're familiar with that. Uh, so, yeah. Anybody else? I did book. Based on uh, your experience, like who should lead that um, design system creation project? Mm -hmm. uh, that's <laughs> 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 Who should lead it? Uh, well, you know, it's, it, it's going to be, I think it, it, it can be like a classic, uh, again, there's so many different uh, people involved, so many different expertise, and myself being a designer, I'm always going to, you know, veer towards having that sort of design perspective, but um, you, you do, you, you always want to have that sort of team that is going to be in charge. You always want to have somebody that's going to drive the project because otherwise it's never going to be, it's never uh, going to get done. And because it's a broad thing, maybe you do want to have a generalist that's going to have an overview of everything and keep the clock ticking. Uh, but again, it's, it's documenting the expertise of, you know, craft, craftsmen. Uh, so it's a lot of, you know, knowledge. And these are the people that are doing it. Right? So, um, uh, you, you want to have a broad uh, range of expertise, but leading it, you know, it, it's probably going to be, um, you know, somebody that's not going to be that technical, but it's going to make sure that, you, you know, you get everything. And especially, as I mentioned, you want to get somebody that's going to get everybody excited and, you know, engaged. All right. I really don't have my phone loud enough. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, so you were saying about the brand book and the story book and the difference between them. But I know that in two people, for example, on the right side bar, in a specific mode, there is a CSM code that uh, describes the specific button, specific item, specific form, for example. Isn't it easier to for simplifying, to automatize the filling up this CSS code from Figma to some document or not? Just middle for the developer can create a story book, but in true. Yeah. Great question. For me, it's um, it's always better to have everything in a very linear way, especially for this very linear. And what I mean by that is that on Figma, you need to click on the button to see that content. You need to click on it, you need to scroll down to access that code. So you need to be an expert to find it. And I think that it's always better to have that linear approach. Everything is laid out flat, you don't need to click on anything, it's right there, you've got the button, you've got, you got, well, you got the component, and you've got the code snippet. So everybody can see it, it's very accessible, and I think that that's what makes it very uh, different than being hidden in the interface. Upload the CSS uh, description from the file um, because I don't know, I'm not a designer. <laughs> yeah, no, probably. Okay. No. Yeah. So I'm speaking as a non tech, non public like, the <laughs> perspective here. Um, how important or what role does like non web or digital projects play into developing a visual identity system? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Well, you saw that um, there were there were three three elements that were non-web from the beginning. You got your marketing uh, strategic uh, frameworks. You got your uh, brand design, and you got your guidelines. The guidelines can be applied specifically to UI, but they can also be just more general, and they don't have to be web web based. Right. So you do have a big chunk of it, an important one. That's not what it is. Jay. That's so a question that like, in my past job in Montreal, I worked with CAE and we designed a design system using Frontify. So we're going to show that example. So one aspect of what's important to them was to showcase their media. So Frontify has a digital asset management system, so you can use this as your server. Is one aspect, but it has this. Uh, but in terms of the design system, we, they see it works with digital, but also print. 
But for designers, I had all the guidelines within PDFs, but it wasn't accessible for everyone. We need to give freelancers, other designers, a link and say, we need a new advertisement. Here's the specifications. The one that needs to be top left corner. Here's the safe space. You're using these fonts at these sizes, this color. So you can put all of these guidelines within a few pages with multiple tabs that digs into these systems. And then the same goes for web too. We can showcase different components. Um, what are the, the color choices? Because they have different variations. So we have a red auction, you have a white auction. You can put the image on the left or right. Um, character amounts to not break the component. It's got to be within 150 characters. So with these design systems, you can see how that branches out into video, into multiple things. So it becomes one central hub that you can just copy and paste one link and say, here you go. You have the knowledge, go ahead with it. Here's all our images. If we tag them all, you can find all the images related to civil, civil, issue, civil aviation within the, these tabs. So it's all within this one hub. The, the hard part is to maintain it over time. So the brand changes, the logo gets updated. This is where the org comes in. So you've got to develop that brand and those guide those templates very strongly so they live well over time. And as they evolve, then you have to update them. It is very popular. Okay. Questions? Yes. Hello. Uh, so, in your experience, how to convince a customer who don't want to design systems and ask you to portrait randomly any component? Would you recommend to add that component as a new stuff or you would need to convince the customer to stick to the component? You want, you want to convince your customer, your client, to use the same components? Is that it? Yeah, but sometimes customer demands that if there's a small thing and we ask them to stick to the brand guidelines, right? They will say, no, no, you can just update it. Ah, yeah, yeah. This will disrupt the whole system. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so Milan is saying that his clients are asking him to change the existing components and make them all different, right? And he wants to convince them to use the same one, right? It's a, it's a tricky one. I think, you know, it comes down to what I was saying about, you know, uh, consistency. And I think it's it, it's also about complementarity, right? If it's complementary, it doesn't, it's okay that it's not exactly the same thing. And if they're asking for something custom, it's more more money to you, right? So you got more hours than you're doing, right? So that, that's a good thing. If you're convincing them to do a user design system, in the end they're going to play you this, so you got to watch out. <laughs> yes. um, have you had experience where you had trouble getting leadership buy-in on All right, so leadership buy-in. I think it's, uh, you know that presentation? I'll send it to you. And you can <laughs> do a roadshow with it. And you just keep on doing it. Doing it and just look at that buy-in. It's communication, I think. You just gotta, gotta keep hammering. All right, anybody else? Yes, sir. As an agency. As an agency. When you work with different clients, each one gets their own design system and soon you recycle them from one project to another. How much consistency do you have across your design systems? Okay, well, as an agency, there's uh, lots of different uh, use cases. Sometimes the, the clients, they have their own design system, just use it and follow it. Sometimes they have the design system, but they ask us to uh, change it a little bit, adapt it. Um, sometimes so we would need to create a design system for them and what we do uh, you know internally as an agency we've got the we've got the uh, foundation for a design system that helps us speed up things a little bit but it only starts with 
um, and what, what we use as, a, as wireframes. And that's like what we have, uh, you know, as, as a basis because all projects are very different. So we don't want to have something that's, you know, front end ready, right? So it, we, we keep it very, uh, um, uh, very light touch in terms of definition or low fidelity. So it's still perfect, but it's those recurring component that, that they are recurring that we have identified so that we focus on these. Uh, but yeah, we don't apply a systematic design system to our clients because that's not what they come to us for, right? Okay. Last chance? Anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.